This is video number 20 now from digital-university.org where we are considering different types of uh, techniques to analyze electrical circuits. In this problem we have another um, direct current circuit that has two voltage sources and a current source incorporated into it. And then here we have three resistors in the circuit, a 6 ohm and a 4 ohm and a 2 ohm resistor. And we can start the problem then by in each independent or treating each part of these circuits as if they're as if they support independent mesh currents going through the circuit in a clockwise direction. So here we have, as we've done in the previous videos, this would be mesh current I1 and here mesh current I2. Then the next step is to remove the current source from the circuit, or at least on your diagram, remove it. So we have now the circuit that looks like this. And now what we do then is we sort we form a super mesh current starting from right here where I1 began and the super mesh current continues like this goes right on through here like this and returns to the starting point. So this is our super mesh current now. This part of the super mesh current is comprised of current I1 and this part of the super mesh current is comprised of current I2 and what we do is we go around the super mesh here and we use our technique of the um, format super mesh uh, analysis approach that we have already discussed in several of the preceding um, videos. So here in this part of the super mesh current we have current I1 goes through resistors of 6 ohm and 4 ohms so we have 10 I1. There are no other opposing currents going through these resistors so we continue on going along the super mesh current and here we have I2 current I2 going through that resistor of 2 ohms no opposing currents going through there so we have plus 2 I2 and here in the super mesh current we have two voltage sources now here for this is current I1 and it is going we consider it going through the battery so that means it's going from a lower potential to a higher potential so that's a positive voltage drop of 20 volts here it would be current I2 and again this is going from a lower voltage a lower potential to a higher voltage potential so that's a positive voltage drop of 12 volts so we can add these together that's a total positive voltage drop of 32 volts it's a positive number you write it on this side of the equation with a plus sign before it. We don't bother put it. We don't have to bother putting the plus sign in, of course, but it is positive 32. Now, this is the only mesh equation that we get, and in this mesh equation, we have two unknowns to solve for uh, I1 and I2. So, before we can proceed further, we need to go back, look at the circuit, and see if there is other information that we can gather that will tell us how currents I1 and I2 relate to each other. So let's just put this back in focus. Here's our original circuit and we took away the current source 
And when you're taking away a current source, somewhere in that immediate vicinity, there's going to be a critical node. And in this case, it's this one right here. So if we look at it and we see current I1 is going in this direction. So I1 is flowing right into that node. Now current I2 is going in this direction. So current I2 flows out of that node and so does this 4 amps. That's flowing in this direction. And of course at any node the net current flow is zero. Currents that go away from the node we write down with a positive value. Currents going into the node we write down with a negative value. So here we have minus I1 plus I2 plus 4 equals 0. So let's write that up here. We have minus I1 plus I2 plus 4 that equals 0. Now, now we have two equations and two unknowns. We have two unknowns, I1 and I2, and we have two equations. Uh, we could set this up and solve it with uh, determinants, but this is such a simple equation, or such a simple setup here, we can say, well, I2, that will equal I1 minus 4. So let's go over here. Here we have 10 times I1 plus 2 times I2. That's this. So here we have 10 times I1 plus 2 times I1. So 12 I1 minus 8 equals 32, or 12 I1. 12 times I1 equals 40. It looks like I1, current I1, that will equal 40 divided by 12, or that will equal 20 divided by 6 amps. And that came out with a positive sign for I1. So we know that here, mesh current I1 would indeed be in a clockwise direction. Now what about I2? Uh, that's easy enough to determine. That's right from here. So here we have current I2 equals I1 20 over 6 minus 4. And let's see if we put that over 6. 20 over 6, so this is 10 over 3. And then if we put this over 3, that would have to be 12. So this equals minus 2 thirds amps. So here is I1 and here is I2. Now let's go back to our original circuit. I2 was minus 2 thirds, so current I2 was going in this direction actually. And current I1, that came out to be 10 over 3rd with a positive sign, so that flows through in this direction. So we pretty much had the problem finished then. We know that this goes like that, and that again, I2 has 
in this direction it's plus two-thirds amps and I1 was ten-thirds amps. So the amount of current flowing through here and here is ten-thirds amps in this direction. The amount of current through this resistor is two-thirds amps going in this direction. Okay, and really that solves the entire problem. So again, the technique rests upon setting the problem up. Go ahead and drawing your loop currents in. At the beginning, assign them a uh, clockwise direction. And then once you do that, remove whatever current sources you have. That will allow you to set up some super mesh currents. And then also when you remove the current source, right in the vicinity, there's going to be a critical node that will give you more information about how the different currents relate to each other. And with that information, along with the super mesh currents and other mesh currents that you can develop along the way, put those together, you should have enough information to solve for all the currents and all the different parts of the circuit. So that's it for this video. Come back and join us on the next video, and we'll try and solve some more problems like this.